session to Dr. Akhtar Parvez for the session on acquisition policy of books. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I am also very happy to see the active participation of, from uh, library professionals. And, uh, you know, uh, when questions are asked, obviously I will also learn. And uh, one should always keep learning. I think that is very important. Uh, and it is more important for the uh, younger librarians because you see, maybe, you know, after some time they are the ones who have to actually uh, take over this uh, profession. So, but you know, you can take over the profession only when you have required knowledge of the subject. That is, of course, uh, library science. So, with these words, let me just uh, 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 share my screen. And as I, uh, as uh, Dr. Rathod said, I'll be speaking on uh, acquisition uh, process uh, that uh, you know we follow here at my university. So, I think uh, my screen is uh, now visible to you. Yes, it is visible. Okay. So, uh, uh, so uh, let me just start the presentation. And uh, you know, this is the uh, picture of uh, cave of Hira, uh, uh, which we call Gare Hira, uh, where uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to sit for long periods, and uh, he used to get. Uh, or receive messages from God through one of the angels. And the first message or the first revelation that uh, came on him was about acquiring knowledge. The first thing, you know, uh, first message uh, which uh, he received from God, uh, it was, you know, it is obligatory for every person to acquire knowledge. And uh, uh, this thing is, you know, as relevant today at as it was, uh, of course, during that time. In fact, I will go uh, one step further in saying that, you know, in today's time, uh, this particular thing that is uh, the, uh, the obligation for every person to acquire knowledge has gained more relevance or more importance. Now, similarly, you know, in the same way, I feel that though the five laws of library science came in 1928, but uh, the importance of those laws uh, is still there and uh, perhaps, you know, they are more relevant today than they were any time in the past. Uh, uh, here, you know, when we say books are for use, every book is for reader. I mean, we should not uh, uh, just think that this law was about only books. In fact, that time, you know, when these uh, laws came, of course, there was nothing except print books. So that is why the law was made in in such manner or the nomenclature would like that but uh, when we say books uh, it includes everything you know all kinds of information all kinds of you know maybe journals ebook everything so uh, what we see here the two very important thing uh, in these laws one is of course the books which you will find in every law uh, directly or indirectly you know book has uh, 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 has a role to play and also you know user service when we talk of save the time of the reader we can save the time of the reader only if our policies proper policies are in place books are there at the right place only then you will be able to save the time of the reader or you can say the electronic information so if your electronic information is properly integrated only then you expect the user not to waste time. And of course, uh, you know, library is a growing organism and hence it becomes very, very important that uh, the policies that we have related to weed out policy, stock education, all these things these are actually uh, are important for any library apart from the growth in manpower of any library. So uh, this is what, uh, you know, I feel about these uh, five laws. So, you know, libraries uh, changed over uh, the years and now we have uh, very sophisticated libraries. We see security, uh, we see security gates in our libraries uh, and a lot of other things, you know, what you witness in libraries. 
and of course you know though the internet is also there a lot of people say that uh, now everything is available on internet but is it really available i think that is uh, something we really need to look at i mean uh, general information of course will be there and that is the reason why you know people instead of coming to library they prefer searching on the internet but when you talk of scholar scholarly content you will realize that uh, uh, you won't get uh, uh, i think somebody's mic is uh, on can i request them to please uh, just mute okay so uh, yeah so what I, what i was saying uh, is that uh, uh, though you know a uh, lot of information is available on the internet but when we uh, actually want to see scholarly content that is usually missing from the internet and not just that if you talk in the indian context you will find that uh, uh a, a large uh, uh, you know a volume of information is not there on the internet because you know it has not been digitized and it will take uh, many more years uh, before uh, you know most of the indian content is available on the internet and uh, uh, you know there there, there are a lot of uh, you know court judgments etc which actually uh gives us a feeling that now the open access is the way forward but you know whether it was uh, what is it is now internet or it was the previous uh, you know uh, era of uh, uh, print books uh, etc service has uh, its own importance and uh, yesterday and day before yesterday also i said uh if you know, unless you provide a good library service to your users probably you will not gain respect in your institution so the service part is very very important and uh, you can provide service only if you have time to provide uh, these services and how you will get time when your systems are in place okay for i mean you don't have to actually waste unnecessary time in you know reinventing the wheel so it is important that we have proper pl- uh, processes systems policy in place and uh, you know this thing i said to you yesterday also that uh, and today also that process is important and i always uh, you know feel uh, for the last many years that uh, today uh, the profession of library science is more challenging than it was any time in the past okay and uh, uh, since it is very very challenging it is important that every library staff or librarian when i say librarian i actually include all the library staff all those you know who are qualified librarians after doing their undergraduate degrees or pg degrees etc so one has to move with the time if you don't move with the time you will be left behind and uh, as i said the profession of library science is extremely challenging today and it is extremely important important for us to you know adapt to the change because change is the only thing which is constant so why i say that profession of library science is uh, uh, you know uh, very challenging it's because you know earlier we just had books but now we have e books and uh, uh, we uh, we have to you know distribute or disseminate information uh, quickly Uh, then you know we also have to take care of what are the copyright provisions you know can you uh, really make use of uh, the content which you have uh, in terms of fair use uh, you also have to train staff and students you also have to be good uh, at you know reading agreements or interpreting the uh, uh, the clauses which are given in the licensing agreements with you so when you subscribe to electronic resources and then uh, Uh, you know you have to uh, also you know understand what are the uh, academic ethics you have to train people uh, how you can avoid plagiarism um, you have to do a lot of analysis and uh, uh, say for example you know when you want to renew things you have to do analysis uh, of its use and uh, that is why you know uh, the, the 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 whole uh, gamut of library science uh, becomes extremely extremely challenging and unless you uh, uh, get involved in the library operations you will not be really able to succeed in your career so it is not just it is not important that you know 
how many certificates we have with us but what is important is that uh, uh, what knowledge we have of the uh, real things that we do in the library you know when i see people speaking on you know speaking big big things in conferences uh, i find that you know when i see their own houses their own houses means their libraries will not be in order so unless you know your house is in order you see there is no uh, there is no point you know preaching what you don't practice so hence it's important that we involve ourselves fully in our libraries only then we can make our libraries a better place so now you know uh, uh, one of these things uh, uh, you know what i just uh, told you uh, that you know uh, there have to be proper processes so one such process is of course the uh, process of uh, acquisition you know how do we acquire books in libraries and you know here majorly we will discuss the uh, acquisition process of print books but i mean to some extent we will discuss the uh, acquisition process or uh, the procedure followed in acquiring e resources or e books etc so what are the steps involved in any acquisition in any library traditionally you know the steps are that uh, we take recommendations we prepare list we check uh, for, uh, these titles for duplication then we take approvals then we place orders then we receive books and after receiving books you know we have to process the bills for payment and then we have to do accessioning and then finally cataloging and sending the books on Michelle so what happens you know what i uh, have seen in bigger libraries is that staff takes lot of time in processing books and sometimes you know it, they they take months you know 8 months 9 months and it is because of other reasons also and one reason is that you know the budgets are released uh, at, uh, at the last moment sometimes in december or january which we are supposed to utilized by march next year but even then you know uh, uh, you know that these are the limitations of system so uh, you have to win over these limitations and how do you win over the situations you have to think uh, critically uh, and in a very positive manner how you can improve the system so that should be the uh, way forward so what happened you know as i said you know i will be discussing our experience so Uh, so that and the reason why i want to discuss our experience so that uh, our young librarians uh, get little motivated and also uh, you know how we actually uh, adapt to the change so in march 2017 uh, we purchased about 6000 books and in march and in january you know 2017 i joined this university so we purchased about 6000 books on flat discount and uh, Uh, every time you know whenever you are sending files for payment uh, bills for payment we were always getting an observation from uh, the audit that uh, we are not giving equal opportunities to the booksellers so what does it mean uh, and they were quoting a gfr rule uh, number 164c they said you know we have to give equal opportunities to all the booksellers we uh, the system that we were adopting was that we had a set of few booksellers about 3 4 and we were uh, purchasing books only from them uh, by getting a 20% or 25% discount uh but you know the the auditor and then i would say to some extent the administration also uh, was uh, uh, thinking that probably auditor is right that we must give equal opportunity because it is taxpayers money uh, though you know i try to make them understand that you know it is these books do not come under uh, the general goods that uh, we purchase in our institutions as per the uh, general financial rules of 2017 but then you know they were adamant and they said that uh, probably we have to uh, you know uh, uh, give equal opportunities by inviting uh, first expression of interest from uh, booksellers who all are interested in uh, you know selling books to us and then finally a committee was constituted and we had several rounds of meeting and then finally you know in 2018 we uh, came out with a policy uh, for acquisition and 
you know before you know uh, after this uh, policy was you know approved we issued uh, an expression of interest and what is expression of interest basically it is a document which is released to the public asking them who all are interested in a particular thing and in this case in our case it was a purchase of books or sale of books and finally you know through this we empanel 14 uh, booksellers and this is the policy uh, that you know we actually uh, this is the document so let me just uh, uh, go to this document and just uh, tell you what all it contained so uh, you know uh, we uh, uh, wanted to purchase books not just for central library of uh, our uh, university but also for all the uh, departments and all the 12 satellite campuses that we have across the country so it was of course a uh, uh, challenge for us that you know um, buying books uh, or uh, in, a, in a centralized manner so you know all these things we gave in the policy you know how to uh, purchase uh, print books uh, who will place order uh, whether the delegation of financial power will be there with the librarian or not uh, then how we should purchase e books uh, or so you know e resources uh, and you know we uh, said that because uh, the there is no uniformity in the prices of uh, electronic resources probably a committee should look into it and then you know we suggested uh, a committee of these people you know which you see here uh, uh, that you know they should uh, actually look into this purchase of resources uh, because you know the uh, amount that we spent on e resources is quite uh, huge and they are very expensive also e resources as you may be aware and then you know how you know we should treat books uh, whether you know what kinds of books we should accept as gifts etc so all those things were there and this was the expression of interest that uh, was issued and in this uh, expression of interest what we did was that uh, we you know gave this table and this table you know uh, uh, not exactly but something we took from university of delhi because university of delhi also uh, i think about 6 uh, 7 years back issued an expression of interest Uh, where they categorized books into different uh, categories like english medium books uh, books in indian languages and so on and so forth so we also you know uh, took some help from that document but this document is little different from uh, their document so what we what we did here is that we gave we said that you know this is the minimum percentage that we expect and we cannot ex- accept anything which is below these things so you tell us you know how much discount you can offer and then a lot of responses came uh, from them and uh, we also said that uh, there should be uh, because we get books from pakistan jordan egypt etc so we said you know uh, uh, we should give uh, we should get 10% discount and uh, you know this can be uh, handled on case to case basis we also said you know what is what will be the a procedure of purchasing books uh, from amazon flipkart etc because now you know what we see today is that uh, and we did a, a small analysis also in my previous organization where we found that uh, when we asked the booksellers to give us uh, 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 you know supply us uh, a particular set of books they said that you know uh, uh, almost uh, 40% books were not available with them because these books were out of print or out of stock but when we uh, went on the uh, website these uh, online portals like amazon flipkart etc uh, we saw that out of that uh, 40% books almost uh, uh, you know 70 80% books were available on the internet so now what is happening is that uh, Uh, more and more people are going towards these online portals you know they instead of giving to the booksellers because uh, uh, if i want to sell my book you know as second hand obviously you know, i'll not uh, as a live non library science professional i will not have access to these booksellers so what i will do is that i will go to amazon and flipkart and sell my book so we found that uh, a large number of books were available there so why should a user suffer because of our process that we do not have a system of purchasing books directly from 
Amazon and Flipkart. So we thought we should give that uh, 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 provision in our book acquisition policy. Also, you know, we uh, had the provision of giving, you know, uh, uh, these uh, some handling charges because some, in some cases, uh, government books uh, have no discount. And when you purchase NCRT books, and because we have three schools, so we have to purchase books for them also in their school. So when you purchase NCRT books, you, you have to pay uh, handling charges also. So we thought, you know, the handling charges should not be 10, should not exceed 10% of the total bill value. And then, you know, we clearly stated that how the order should be placed uh, and, uh, you know, everything, what will, what will be the, you know, uh, penalty on books, uh, on booksellers if they don't supply. But this penalty, etc. actually do not work uh, in the practical sense. Uh, so uh, this, this was a policy uh, we prepared. And then, uh, you know, I think this policy is available on our website also. If not, you know, I'll be very happy to give you uh, just a second. So, you know, these are the challenges I said that uh, we were supposed to uh, do centralized uh, purchasing and uh, for all the departments and all the campuses. And, uh, uh, you know, seeking, uh, we were also, you know, in the, in the uh, acquisition policy, uh, it was written that uh, we, uh, we were supposed to take quotes from publishers, uh, from booksellers. So I was always against it because uh, because what happens if you ask uh, for quotes from these booksellers? So they will give you quotes only for those booksellers on which they uh, get more discount or on which they earn more uh, money or revenue. Uh, but anyway, you know, since uh, there were a lot of uh, things and the committee had finally taken this decision so we had no option but to you know adhere to the policy so uh, uh, you can imagine you know uh, taking quotes for 6000 books that you know we had planned to purchase in 2018 from 14 booksellers i mean it, it was a huge task so 6000 into 14 i mean assuming that all 14 booksellers will give quotes for 6000 books so you can imagine the volume of work that uh, the library staff was supposed to do and the, uh, the major work was actually, you know, identifying which uh, bookseller has quoted the lowest or given the highest discount. And that is always a very, very difficult, you know, unless, unless you have good uh, knowledge about uh, various, uh, uh, you know, uh, applications, uh, uh, IT applications, I would say. And then we thought probably, uh, you know, uh, how should we start? We thought we uh, will ask for recommendation from faculty through Koha. So we told all the faculty that, you know, they should give uh, their recommendations in Koha, but they were not familiar with Koha. They said, uh, you know, it's very difficult. Why can't we give in Excel? So, uh, you know, we have to actually uh, understand their problems. You know, they are not, of course, uh, library science people. And for them, Entering a single title every time in Koha was a big issue. And generally, if uh, since you all work in academic libraries, you must have seen that you know booksellers come and they uh, give a catalog, and the public, the, the 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 faculty marks books from there, and then they prepare Excel sheet and then they send to the faculty, which faculty in turn sends the same to us, asking us to purchase those books. So then, you know, we uh, prepared a, 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 a format uh, uh, in Excel and uh, we said you give all the information in that. And once, you know, and uh, we received back all those Excel sheet uh, different, from different, different departments, uh, HODs, we collated everything into one file. We also gave department information in that Excel sheet because you see, unless we give department information, we will not be able to identify which department has requested for it. Secondly, we also gave campus information and uh, we also gave language information as to book has to be procured in which language. Uh, sometimes, you know, there are books uh, which are in both English language also and Urdu language also. So that is why for us it was important that we clearly mention that uh, this particular books books are required in Urdu language or English language. And uh, the other, you know, uh, thing is that it is very important that there should uh, be uniformity of uh, fields. Uh, now, uh, then uh, what we also did that uh, uh, 
uh, we uh, downloaded the uh, accession register from koha into excel and we merged the all the recommended titles into our accession register to check the duplication because you know checking duplication for 6 7 or 8000 titles uh, manually was very difficult so we actually uh, merged it into the accession register and then we removed uh, the duplicates so this is uh, the uh, this is the uh, image of you know what uh, how the excel sheet look like so for example you know there are two books action research action research so one is the recommended title and another is already in backlog but here the biggest problem was that our assumption is that uh, the title in the catalog and the title in the recommended list are the same okay they are uniform which sometimes is not possible say so for example you know if uh, the title which is recommended by faculty if there is a space between action and research and in this in the, in the next case if there is no space be, be, between action and research they will be sorted in a different manner so that is a problem so secondly you know what we see in libraries that uh, uh, yesterday also i said that uh, uh, it lacks uh, standardization and there are a lot of issues with our catalog uh, records so other option you know we thought that maybe you know the uh, the best thing would be to uh, give isbn numbers in all our records and whenever you know we get uh, the titles uh, uh, from faculty for purchasing we should also give isbn so that you know checking duplication uh, with isbn number is far far easier and uh, more accurate results uh, will come so that was the, the and the limitation of checking it with the title uh, the duplication uh, this is the limitation that there may be uh, spelling mistakes uh, there may be spaces uh, unwanted spaces in our catalog etc so that is why you know but but having said that you know there is no problem in checking it at first level if you have more number of books that you want to purchase and then you know as i said we prepared a list and uh, we merged all the titles and this is the uh, unique number which we gave to every book like accession number in the excel sheet so that you know we recognize every title by this particular number and here if you see these are the departments and mc is basically man, main campus and this is the management department then this you know, this is uh, uh, this particular thing uh, is in badgaon that is uh, kashmir then you know this particular book was recommended uh, by our satellite campus which is in aurangabad and then darbanga and then so on so forth. so this is how you know we prepared that list we merged everything uh, and then uh, we thought we will send it to all the publishers so we sent this this list to the publishers and we asked them uh, we strictly in fact asked them not to change the sequence because if any of the publishers change the sequence then it will become extremely difficult for us to you know compare say for example there is publisher a b c so if uh, publisher b removes two three lines from here then you know when we merged uh, these publishers data into one excel sheet we uh, will have to do lot of you know manual work and it happened with us actually so some publishers or the booksellers despite our very clear instructions that they should not disturb the file they actually disturb the file and uh, locking of these files is also not desirable for certain reason so if i get time i will uh, discuss that also so we did not want to lock the file so uh, then you know uh, uh, that was the, the, those were the instructions given to uh, all the booksellers that that should not disturb they should not disturb these copies how many copies are required Uh, etc and then finally you know what we did was that uh, this is how uh, you know uh, we prepared a excel sheet where we did the comparative ana analysis let me just uh, show you uh, the uh, excel sheet so this is the excel sheet okay so you know uh, these uh, for your convenience i have highlighted some of the columns 
so these were the books that we wanted to, to purchase from uh, you know column a to f and uh, some of you may be wondering you know why you know we did not do it in uh, oha but actually uh, you know such such kind of you know analysis is not possible in koha which we were looking at so that is why we had to take help uh, of excel but having said that you know this data actually we finally converted into excel or imported into excel that also we will discuss so uh, here you know uh, uh, these are different booksellers these are the number of copies that uh, we needed okay then this is the bookseller uh, bibliotheque then we have bsp bookseller then we have overseas and then here it is the discount rate that you know they have given one uh, bookseller has given 24% then 26% and this particular uh, bookseller actually did not quote for any book so that is why you see 00 here and then you know accordingly various other bookseller and then you know the uh, the, the bookseller the prices of the booksellers were also mentioned and then with the help of one of the uh, you know function of the uh, excel we came to know that you know this particular amount is the minimum so this is the lowest amount and we also you know wanted here that it should also tell us who is the publisher or who is the bookseller or publisher who has quoted the lowest so this is how you know excel sheet was created and this particular you know this uh, uh, you know knowing of bookseller's name on the basis of lowest uh, price was possible through using index function which you see here uh, i i know it is getting a little technical but you know i uh, it's important that at least broadly i tell you uh, that how we did and uh, then you know uh, this particular thing minimum uh, was obtained minimum price was obtained uh, after doing comparative analysis using minimum function which you see here okay so this is how uh, we actually did so here uh, you know uh, 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 what was important for us then you know once we did it or in fact when we got the data from the booksellers we wanted to see whether, whether you know the booksellers have uh, done proper calculation like for example uh, in some cases what we observed that uh, bookseller did not calculate the discount properly so we uh, ensured that uh, we calculate uh, the uh, calculations of the booksellers also and that was quite easy it was not difficult and a lot of thing lot of other things were done you know we used uh, we look up formula and uh, uh, all all these things were done and then you know came the uh, thing of this uh, uh, this goc or bank rate you know a lot of people uh, uh, still get uh, goc rate so what is goc goc means the good offices committee uh, there was a time when um, good offices committee contained people from library profession profession also including uh, one or two people from indian library association one person from ministry of finance some publishers and this is how was this is this was the uh, this was how uh, the committee was uh, constituted constituted uh, of the goc but uh, i mean after uh, a few years you know or after i would say many years but uh, uh, of course for the last 10 uh, or 15 years we don't have any representation from indian library association or from ministry of finance or rbi so what gc goc is uh, now body of only publishers and what they do is they actually decide a rate for uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, this currency conversion say for example you know if uh, uh, today is the dollar rate uh, uh, is uh, uh, 76 rupees 1 dollar is equal to 76 then they put a markup on that and that they add 3 or 4 rupees in that and why they do it so that you know uh, and that goc rate is applicable uh, for what the whole month so on every you know th uh, 30th of last month or first of the new month they come out with a goc rate and there they would uh, uh, add 3 or 4 rupees in every foreign uh, currency whether it is uh, dollar or pound or euro etc and they do it so that you know in case the dollar rate goes up uh, or the you can say the if the rupee further depreciates then uh, so they are able to uh, uh, you know uh, they do not uh, uh, i would say incur losses so just to you know safeguard themselves they do this 
but having said that you know i always say that this is this is not the right uh, way of uh, using geo series whether it is journal subscription or it is uh, books why because uh, nobody can you know like this fix the government uh, currency rates so uh, 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 it is it is important that we uh, take bank rate now then is then the question you know when we say bank rate so which bank rate you know we just say you know bank rate should be applicable what what kind of bank rate so uh, what happens you know uh, the, when the book seller supplies books to us in indian rupees uh, after converting uh, foreign currency then he checks from banks and give a number and you know he has to actually purchase currency from the bank to send uh, uh, and then he pays indian rupees so that you know there is uh, uh, just a second just just a second please uh, just, just a second uh, just a second <clears throat> yeah so what happens you know here the bank rate uh, uh, is uh, uh, something that is debt uh, selling price selling price of foreign currency that bank rate has to be uh, uh, calculated and recognized and preferably we should take any public sector uh, bank rate on the date of invoice so ha after having uh, said all these things uh, you know uh, the good thing about you know our system that we were adopting was we had just one file created in the beginning that is the file which we sent booksellers for seeking quotes and after that all the data everything was being you know built on that particular sheet and uh, why we were doing it so that you know at the time of accessioning it should not happen that once again you know we are entering those uh, records so we uh, using these sheets you know we could easily uh, uh, come to know that uh, particular bookseller has to supply these many books he is supplying for you know 27 lakh something and then uh this bookseller so many titles he will supply or this will be the cost and finally you know the total number of uh, titles we were getting that is 11663 and this is the amount for which we were purchasing books that is uh, 1 crore 35 lakh something so uh, uh, and then you know it was very easy for us also to understand for which campus sorry so which campus you know we how much we are spending so that was also quite easy for us so then you know came the uh, process of receiving of books so i think i'll finish uh, after 10 15 minutes so please have patience i know it is getting very technical but you know probably i don't have any option uh, but at the same time you know if you if you start uh, understanding excel you will find it quite easy so in uh, the receiving books receiving of books in bigger libraries you must have seen that you really have to you know Uh, waste a lot of time or spend lot of time in uh, manually receiving those books so what what are the things which are important when you receive books one is that of course you have to see where correct prices have been charged or not by the booksellers and how do you identify that is in case of indian books you uh, see, simply see the printed price and foreign books you see the a uh, publisher's proof so this is how we uh, check and then you know we also check how many copies were ordered how many co copies were actually supplied by the uh, bookseller and then uh, whether you know the calculation of price have been done properly or not see i am talking of foreign currency and uh, then you know uh, what happens but in uh, such a system if you do it if you receive it manually uh, by you know comparing a book with the bill it takes lot of time let me tell you that uh, initially you know for processing a uh, bill of say uh, 150 or 200 bills you know our staff was actually spending the whole day and uh, we found that not just that you know there were uh, some mistakes also because you know when you, when you use calculator there are always chances of mistake so uh, then we thought you know we should uh, develop a small uh, again uh, uh, we go went back to excel and we thought we should uh, uh, you know in excel sheet we should receive all these books so this is a, 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 a screenshot of that and here and all these things you know uh, we were doing in google sheet okay so we were all doing online so here you know there were two actually sheets one was the order sheet that we had and the other you know we created a separate sheet for receiving of books so here you know when we were saying that you know access uh, 
uh, this uh, unique code that we gave to all titles. Whenever we entering this code, uh, corresponding uh, title was appearing, uh, the author was appearing, we were able to see how many copies actually we ordered, what is the call, cost of all copies and uh, uh, what was the cost of single copies, how many copies we have received and uh, what is the cost of only those uh, two copies out of five that we had ordered. So it was quite easy for us and similarly, you know, here uh, we also uh, were able to uh, get the uh, uh, the currency conversion. So I told my staff that they should not use uh, the calculator because uh, uh, I think that because it's better that we do it in Excel because Excel is also like a calculator. But for their you know convenience, convenience, we thought we should define everything here so that they don't have to do anything. And in case you know um, uh, we had uh, say for example if we had ordered five uh, copies of a book and if they were actually uh, receiving more copies then uh, immediately you know you will uh, you will get a uh, you know a pop up here that you cannot receive more than five copies because uh, the uh, the number of copies which were ordered were only five so i i'm not though i had planned to show it uh, practically but i'm skipping it uh, and then you know finally came uh, after receiving all the which we wanted to accession so we leveraged on the available data the data that we already had that uh, the recommendations we received from faculty and then again you know we took help of google sheet or you can say excel whatever you want to call and from there you know we started accessioning these books only one person was giving accession numbers and about uh, four or five people were doing data entry and uh, uh, in this, while doing the data entry, you know, we were giving all the, those information which was which was missing because the title was already there, the author was already there, publisher was there, etc. So we were giving only those things which were not there, like call number, uh, invoice number, and if you wanted to give collection code, etc. And then you know, labeling, pasting, etc. was done in our uh, technical section. And uh, fine, and this is the uh, this is the uh, screenshot of that accession. Uh, register the virtual or the sorry the online uh, uh, accession register somebody I think from some Myanmar uh, Myanmar I asked this question about this uh, uh, electronic accession register so this is how you know we, uh, we did our accession register and uh, uh, the same you know the data which was flowing from earlier sheet of you know when books were received so in, in the next, you know, sheet uh, or because all these sheets were connected uh, or linked. So we were getting complete details, you know, of the bills that we are, we have received. And then it was very easy for us to, you know, control the budget. Uh, uh, because uh, if you do it manually, there are bound to uh, be mistakes. And we also experienced it. So we thought, you know, we should uh, rely on technology more and more so that uh, there are no errors. And we tried to reduce the human intervention uh, in terms of, you know, calculation or whatever you can say. And then finally, you know, we checked uh, the records for quality, whether, you know, there is and checking in Excel sheet uh, about the quality is quite easy because you can see whether, you know, publishers, uh, uh, all publishers have been entered properly. In because, you know, when you do data entry, some publishers are entered like in you know, Printers Hall of India, and then it says Printers Hall, sometimes it is just Printers, uh, so it's like that. So we thought, you know, if it is there, we'll be able to edit it uh, fast. And also like, you know, some at some place it may be New Delhi, some place it will be N Delhi, some uh, at some place it may be New uh, DEL. So, I mean, to avoid all those, you know, uh, 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 non standardized things, we... Uh, prefer doing it in Excel and then you know we identify what are the gaps so in case you know uh, our staff has forgot to give call number or forgot to actually input the call number or price of the invoice it's we I mean it was very really easy just by sorting the sheet we came to know and then you know uh, we were also checking the barcode because we thought you know before the books go to the shelf we must check whether the barcodes are corresponding to the title or not and you know, uh, uh, once the books are barcoded, it is very easy to segregate. So, if, if in case you are not able to locate a particular book uh, through barcoding, it's it becomes extremely easy. So, uh, you know, uh, all those things were checked, and we also checked, you know, uh, because we have one. Uh, some books are for textbook collection, or you can say reading hall. Some books are for reference. Some books are for general collection. So. Uh, 
to uh, to you know to uh, actually uh, i would say analyze all those things is was very important in the technical section before they actually go to the respective sh shelf and what we also saw here in our library that you know at times we found that reading a uh, room book is in general collection and the reference book is some other collection so what we started doing is we started labeling it uh, uh, all the books with a uh, the bright uh, sticker so that people know you know our staff knows that okay this book is by mistake is here in this this collection it has to be put in the right collection so this is how you know we try to control everything and then what we did the whole you know uh, data uh, was actually imported into koha now the data that we had uh, uh, got imported into koha and then you know what we did we took a print out of this uh, accession register and we authenticated it by signing etc and we uh, did it so what we uh, you know uh, uh, experienced here and and let me tell you that i am not exaggerating but you know uh, earlier my staff was taking about 6 to 7 months but after using this process they were they just took 2 and a half months to finish uh, thousands of books so that is the uh, efficiency that you know uh, uh, was uh, uh, seen uh, in our staff and of course i'm not saying they are not uh, inefficient they are very efficient but at the same time you know this system actually helped them to uh, do things fast so for electronic things you know yesterday i also said you know all the ebooks that we got we wanted to check whether their url urls correct or correct or not so we check them in the bulk url checker so that uh, we give the right uh, url on uh, in our koha uh, and all these you know books uh, the electronic uh, books were imported into koha so that a user gets everything on the same page so you know if you, by using this system uh, obviously uh, for the last uh, uh, two days i have been saying that uh, when you use technology there is more accuracy uh, and uh, here you know it was very easy for us to generate different kinds of reports now if anyone wants uh, any kind of report from us whether it is uh, uh, finance or uh, administration or if you need something from for our use it is it has become, become extremely important it is extremely easy, easy for us to uh, you know take out the reports from the data that we already have so what we do is we keep uh, one printed copy of copy of the accession register with us uh, and we also keep uh, the pdf so uh, with this i think i would like to thank you and uh, i'm not sure how useful it was uh, you may be having a different system of uh, uh, acquisition which may be better than us but i thought you know we uh, i must uh, uh, as a senior you know librarian it is my duty to Uh, share uh, the knowledge uh, uh, that we uh, have acquired over the years and uh, the changes that we see in our libraries in the last so many years so with this thank you very much and i stop sharing uh, i'll be happy to you know take up any questions okay thank you thank you very much dr parvez for a detailed wonderful presentation on acquisition policy of books so now we have received certain questions so with your kind permission yeah okay uh, the first question is from astha how to digitize school library school library yeah. huh so ah. i think uh, uh, one is uh, astha you will have to first really identify Uh, do you when you are when you are saying digitize so uh, i am assuming that you want to uh, digitize print books that is one so one you know there are two kinds of documents so one are bond digital and one are uh, documents which are in print uh, form which you want to digitize so if you want to digitize the books which you have you already have in the library so first you know you'll have to uh, take into consideration the copyright involved in that and uh, if uh, it is out of copyright so uh, the copyright duration is actually the lifetime of the author plus 60 years in india so if it is out of copyright there is no problem in digitizing uh, you can digitize and host it on your uh, uh, wherever you want on the library page or wherever but if they are under copyright uh, still you can uh, scan it and uh, uh, put it uh, on um, on a very secure place so when i because you know 2000 
12th amendment of the copyright says that uh, we are allowed to store each and everything which is available in the library but it does not say anything about distribution so distribution means dissemination or making it accessible to people so uh, but having said that is i should, i we should not take it in so uh, narrow sense uh, i feel that uh, you have no problem in digitizing you digitize and uh, if you want to give access to the students make sure that that access is available to them electronically in the library only only do not even put that on internet because if you put it in the internet it will be like distribution and if you do distribution you will be violating copyright uh, laws so that is uh, uh, that's one in case you you were asking you know how do we digitize basically then of course you know uh, if you can buy a good scanner so that is one secondly you know there are a lot of agencies who actually do digitization work uh, from them you can take help so it is always better to outsource than doing it yourself because maybe you know after you are done with all the digitization uh, i don't know how useful that machine uh, will be for you that scanner etc so but it is up to you depending on your size of collection you can take a call so what we did here is that though we had uh, some uh, good number of rare books uh, we are using we are outsourcing it someone else is doing for us so this is how i mean uh, i I'm, i'm not sure you know whether i could answer uh, what you asked but uh, this is the possible things i thought you may be asking okay there is one more question by archana parek like which amount we have to mention in accession register discounted price or mrp yeah you know these are the actually basic questions uh, which actually come up uh, when we discuss all these things and we never pay attention unfortunately to all these things uh i have seen in many libraries what they do is when they have there's a uh, column in accession register about size so they also mention size you know everywhere you will find they have mentioned size so how do they mention size do they actually measure it no they uh, just uh, do it they, i mean this is just a guess work so i think this size is not very important unless the book is of very large size and you know that you want to uh, identify it by size uh, then it's a different issue so what was the question yeah so pr- list price or so i think it is uh, mandatory that we uh, put less li- list price and at the same time we also mention the discount what discount you got in case the book is in foreign currency then you must uh, mention the foreign currency rate not the uh, foreign currency not the indian uh, rupee why because if you want to recover the cost from someone some student or faculty so that time you know uh, the dollar rate may be different at a time when you are recurring the cost the dollar rate may be different so it is important that uh, the dollar rate is mentioned there you know if this book is available on uh, for purchase uh, then it's very easy to find the latest price but in case uh, the book is not available you just want money from them so on what basis you will uh, charge money so you will take uh, that dollar dollar price and multiply it by you know today's uh, rate and then uh, charge so it is important that we give list price uh, of books but but you know if you are really doing it in excel sheet all these things and you are uh, archiving this excel sheet uh, all these problems you know will get resolved everything because this excel sheet will have everything it will not just have those mandatory fields that they are there in the accession register but it will have many more things and the advantage of using excel sheet for accession register is that once you write just the list price and discount the uh, discounted price will come automatically and same is true for uh, you know uh, converting dollar into rupees so that is the uh, that is the uh, time saving thing which excel sheet provides you provided you know your institution allows you to uh now take a print of excel sheet and keep it uh, as hard copy and they recognize this you know but you can uh, try to convince them you know this should be treated as proper document authenticated document because it is signed by librarian yes true, true. okay now uh, question by naresh ram like we purchase first time the ebooks for our library for one year so how to maintain accession register for this one year actually mai samjha nahi matlab one year matlab one year ke baad uska access khatam ho gaya kya 
क्या हुए मतलब इट्स नॉट फॉर इट्स फॉर वन ईयर दे परचेज दोस ईबुक्स फॉर जस्ट फॉर वन ईयर ओके सो यू नो इफ यू आर परचेसिंग बुक्स फॉर वन ईयर सो दैट इज बेसिकली सब्सक्रिप्शन ओके सो यू आर सब्सक्राइबिंग बुक्स यू आर नॉट बेसिकली इन अ मैनर यू आर नॉट परचेसिंग Uh, purchase is when you know when you do uh, lifetime purchase so books you know which you purchase only for a limited period you should never accession those books because if you accession it will become a permanent asset of the library so if it is only for one year two years three years then let it be there on the uh, publishers website there is no problem and uh, uh, if you are subscribe of if you if you purchase uh, electronic books Uh, as per perpetual access or for unlimited number of years then it makes sense for accessioning it because once you accession and after 5 years if you don't have access to those books you will get into trouble uh, the auditor may ask where is this particular book and these books will not be accessible to you because the subscription has already expired so to avoid such things my suggestion to uh, all the uh, participants is that they should to the extent possible purchase only those books which are available for as per perpetual access for unlimited numbers of years without any uh, annual charge or uh, platform fee etc so for this you will have to read their agreements very carefully so that is why i said in you know, it is the moment which is a very challenging time for librarian they have to be little legal expert also they must understand licensing issues uh, clearly and uh, they must read uh, these uh, uh, you know if i uh, take home loan i never read it because if i start reading that agreement i will never take the home loan because the, the terms and conditions are so stringent but you know when you are buying for library you have no option you have to actually go through the license properly if you don't do that then you will get into trouble true true okay now there is a question by dr akhtar husain like what do you feel is the most important skill an acquisitions librarian should possess doctor sahab aap mein to mashallah sare skills hain aapko is cheez ki zarurat nahi hai aise to lekin aapne pucha hai to zahir hai mujhe jawab to iska dena hi hai uh you know uh though i can answer it in many ways but i think as you as long as you are logical okay as you as as long as you have critical thinking you can make good decisions but if you are not logical you know if you are just going by what you uh, studied in library science course then probably i think uh, that is, you have to change you have to understand the requirement of your faculty like for example i said you know uh, why should i be rigid that uh, the faculty should recommend in koha only because they are uncomfortable so i have to change myself okay uh, i have to be very flexible if i become rigid about processes then uh, probably i will not be able to provide right kind of services that are expected from me so i think that logical thinking uh, i tell my staff that even you know if when you are uh, writing uh, or printing the call number on the label okay and you writing you are writing book number you are writing class number i mean you should know why you are writing class number why we are writing uh, uh book number what kind of system we are following and uh, you know if you ask if you start asking questions to yourself about each and every small thing which you do in the library then you will start getting answers if you are not able to ans- give uh, uh, if you are not able to find answers yourself ask your uh, uh, i mean if you are uh, not a librarian then you can ask the librarian if librarian also is not able to answer probably uh you should ask those who know a little bit of library science but you should uh, develop that habit of asking questions but this does not mean that you ask unnecessarily question to your boss and he gets irritated it's not that you ask some uh, relevant questions so as long as you know we start asking relevant questions as long as we uh know what we are writing in our reports which is which or in our recommendation that we send to administration as long as you know we start thinking from their perspective whether they will understand my note or not see the note which you write in your libraries you don't write for yourself you write it for others to understand so it should be so uh, self explanatory that you uh, i think uh, uh, don't need to really go to them and explain so uh 
So the skill, I think a lot of people are talking of skill these days. So what I said is you have to be logical. Uh, uh, you have to, uh, you know, ask questions. Uh, uh, key, get involved in your work. Unless you get involved, you know, you will probably think that I am mad. Yesterday I also said that you get yourself involved in your work. Unless you involve yourself in the work, you will not. You, know, you read new literature which is coming in library science. What is happening in technology? You know, if somebody says that you know we should uh, go for discovery service. So if your boss says, uh, or I mean your vice chancellor director, then you should analyze yourself first whether the discovery is required by us or not. How many resources I subscribe? If I subscribe less number of resources, probably I don't need discovery. Okay. So like that, you know, you have to. After that, I can probably give you an answer. If not, then you can ask me later. There is a question by Saira. It's a long question. Purchasing of six thousand books is a huge task. So did you consider the local vendors or the publishers or any online purchase was also made? We did, uh, you know, in government setup, you know, they, they, there is a lot of rigidity, there is a lot of bureaucracy and rules, right? So uh, what we did, you know, though we wanted to buy directly on uh, uh, from the Flipkart or Amazon using our credit card, which I was doing at IIM Indore. So, but, you know, here uh, giving a credit card to any official in a university system is just impossible. So then, uh, but then we wanted that, you know, we should be able to get it uh, through Flipkart. So in the policy, what we included was that uh, if there is any requirement of uh, books which are available only on, on these portals, then uh, we should, uh, uh, we should uh, ask these booksellers, the panel booksellers to supply us those books. But then, you know, there were problems, you know, because... Uh, where they will account for all these many these are online transactions sometimes they may have to pay some taxes also so we decided that we will give them 10 percent handling charges so in fact we were pay, we are pay, paying more so uh, if we were buying uh, ourselves we were paying less but because of the system we are buying, uh, uh, paying them additional 10 percent that is number one when you said about whether we considered local or no so we didn't have any option but when you issue Expression of interest, you can't say that only people from Hyderabad should apply. So from all India, they uh, apply and uh, we, are, uh, we are obliged to, you know, entertain all those things. So we have some booksellers from Delhi, we have some booksellers from Hyderabad. And in fact, uh, some booksellers from, uh, I think, Jaipur also, from uh, Lata's old place. So uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I know it is huge. And uh, you will not believe that, you know, when we started doing this process, it was complete madness. We didn't know what to do. Time was limited. But as I said, you know, you'll have to think critically. You have to think positively and uh, some solution will come. They, wherever, you know, there is a will, there is a way. I had the option of telling the administration that, look, uh, you involve uh, IT department. I can't do all these things in Excel. I had that option. But uh, then I thought, you know, why not we develop that uh, skill in our staff? And today I'm very happy that uh, well, uh, staff is so much skilled. And let me just mention the name of Yusuf, Muhammad Yusuf, who actually does all these things. Uh, you know, when I joined, uh, uh, he uh, didn't have uh, a very good idea about Excel. But then, you know, I kept pressurizing him you know, of doing this, doing that. And finally, you know, today I would say he is one of the stars of the life. So that is the, you know, you have to, you know, do you have to actually uh, recognize the weakness and strength of your staff? Accordingly, you utilize them. Sorry, I am going a little long, I think, in my answers. Yeah, and there are many questions, but I think I will take just one or two questions. And the other participants, they can uh, mail Dr. Uh, Parvez and you can get your uh, query answered. Okay, just uh, one more question. Like, well, from where we can find the books which are free from cop copyright action? So that we can digitalize those books. Hmm. Uh, books which are free from copyright. Uh, but why do you want to find those books which are free from copyright? I mean, you should rather concern which books you want. And then look for which are copyright free or not. I mean, just, uh, you know, uh, checking for all the books which are copyrighted free, I think it doesn't make sense. So you first identify your requirement. 
and then you search uh, whether uh, which is which there is copyright free or not so that you have to do so i have a, a presentation on copyright uh, so it, which is available on my youtube channel so i would request uh, you and maybe you know those who are interested to know uh, things about copyright you should uh, see that presentation so uh, probably that will give you some answers about this uh, topic i think okay. we can we can can we take up two three i'll answer quickly i'll not take much time sorry so one of the important questions which uh, we are uh, everyone is discussing this days like for the future this is from mr thomas from myanmar for the future should we develop most of the traditional libraries to fully digital libraries or to high hybrid libraries there is no option but hybrid libraries you cannot digitize everything uh, publisher may not allow uh, you sometimes to digitize everything uh, books may not all digital books may, at least uh, uh, i don't see this happening in next 25 years okay there is a question by seema when we have to recover cost for the lost books which is not available in the market what should be the criteria further discounted price or list price what should be the pays no you know it depends what you what rule you set but like for example our rule is that we take uh, four times cost it uh, at time in the our rule was three times of the listed uh, price it was not discounted price it listed price and we should always you know for example if uh, the second edition was lost and today uh, seventh edition is available then you have to take seventh edition not second edition also if uh, uh, uh hard bound is lost then you it should be replaced by hard bound not paperback if paperback is not available then you have to recover the cost three times four times or two times whatever your committee decides okay there is one question by nirzari while we are doing entry all purchased book in our register we have to make different entry for granted and non granted section in school so uh, my suggestion you know this question was asked to me uh, uh, at one place which i visited a few months back before the lockdown uh, you know here i would say that uh, you should have only one accession register but you should be able to do it in such a manner that you are able to call out the information that you need so for example if you want to know which are the books which were purchased in a particular grant that you should be able to take out so which means which means that you know when you enter it in koha or any other software just make proper entry that under which grant that was uh, purchased so that uh, whenever you know the administration asks you can take out that list from them and give it but if you have no option probably you will have to go with two registers again seema is asking like sir please guide regarding binding like in school library we have fiction books which are very thin and priced below rupees 60 70 but their bi binding cost is high but if so we don't you, buy you are not sales so you 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 uh, weed out those books and replace them with new copies i mean instead of going for binding if you are uh, spending more money in binding it is good to go for uh, uh, a replaced copy new copy okay then uh, as i say how to check copyright for our books uh you know on the verso page that is the back side of the title uh, you will see that symbol c is written c within circle so if the c is written against the name of the author then the copyright is with uh, the author if c is written uh, against the name of the publisher then the copyright is with the publisher so that is how you identify but in case uh, it is with the author and if the author has already passed away and 60 years have also gone and or 60 years should be calendar years okay from 1st january for example if somebody passes over to today then you have to calculate from 1st january 2021 so that's how you get the information about copyrighted book but at at times you know at times at times it may be extremely difficult especially for older books to uh, identify who owns the copyright for that you please see my copyright uh, video <laughs> i am actually publicizing also about see all these uh, people are uh, thanking you also but uh, now i'm not reading those things that uh, thank you sir thank you no, sir thank you. No. okay so, uh, so now thank you very much for answering the queries so there are one or two participants who would like to provide their feedbacks so first may i please invite uh, dr pawan agarwal from dr apj abdul kalam government college selwasa to provide a feedback good afternoon sir good afternoon everyone good afternoon meeta madam uh, i am attending this session for last 3 uh, 3 days 
through YouTube, of course, not uh, in Google Meet because uh, in office uh, several times we have to skip better option for us. And uh, in theory, we we read theories, we read the principles. But when we go to the libraries, we work, start working, and we face the problem those problems are practical problem and the solution of those, those problems are not available in the books so we have to <laughs> we, we have to approach any um, person who is experienced one that is why it is said that uh, experience is uh, more useful than reading the theories so uh, by attending this session we have uh, got knowledge and got experience of dr Aptar parvez Akhtar, Dr. Akhtar Parvez is as good as always and uh, I have heard uh, him uh, many times. Uh, part of his le this lecture I have heard in Ma uh, Manlibnet conference in uh, Parul but in the three days I have, uh, I have re uh, refreshed it and I have heard many other things uh, like retention policy on first day um, that uh, how useful it is, it is in the era of uh, Right to Information Act. Next day stock verification which is uh, the biggest problem of all libraries, how to do it, how to uh, answer the queries if it is a government co college and even if it is a private institution, uh, you may face several queries and you have to be ready for the answer. We have received, uh, we have got information about all those issues on which we may face the pro questions and how to tackle uh, those questions. And third, which is today, acquisition policy, how do we prepare it? how to acquire the book, how can we face the problem or yes, that problem I have faced, sir, uh, um, that law says that uh, we don't need to tender books and uh, administration and uh, audit says, no, no, you have to do the tendering because you are not giving the equal opportunity and in that case, it biggest problem because we have to ask the tenders from many publishers and uh, it being a government college, they publish the quotation in national newspaper which is more costly than whatever <laughs> discount we receive Absolutely. but for the sake of the rules yes for the sake of the rules we have to do it and we are doing it and uh, yes it was very experienced and it was very good we have received many things many uh, tricks that we can apply in our daily work thank you every thank you everyone thank you organizers and thank you, Mita Ma'am, for organizing this uh, webinar. And it was very good. And I hope it will be very helpful for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Pawan. Uh, now, may I invite uh, Ms. Saira from Delhi College Indoor to provide her feedback. See, it is always a pleasure when somebody from Indoor speaks. So, it is always a great pleasure for me. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, the joy that we feel hearing Ma'am Sudha Murthy speak, same pleasure is felt when we hear Dr. Akhtar Akhtar Parvez speak. Uh, it's uh, very difficult and important intellectual topics are presented in a very easy, understandable, and down to earth form. The three days came up covering very important and practical topics enriching our understanding to a level of handling the complexities of professional work in a very easy way, taking in account the policies and government guidelines declared, which we are not always very much uh, aware or very, very well versed with. In the end, I would like to say that this LDP came, program came up as a complete package and a real treat for all of us. Thanks a lot, Dr. Akhtar Pervais and Dr. Meeta for organizing and coordinating it so well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Saira. Thank you. Thank you. So now let's move on to the formal vote of thanks. Like no, I think it's fine. I think that no, it's okay. Like we have to do this. So on behalf of Chunilal Gandhi Vidya Bhavan, I would like to thank the chairman of Sarvajanik Education Society, Shri Kamlesh Yagnik, for the tremendous support in conducting this LDP. And a very special thanks to Dr. Akta Parvez, University Librarian of Maulana Azad National Urdu University. Now, we were planning to organize this LDP since one and a half months, almost three times, 
dates had been finalized and then rescheduled. It was my then, fault. Sorry, sorry. No, no, it's not like that, you know. But uh, whenever uh, Dr. Parvez was requested, he readily agreed to deliver the three talks on library management process. So for this, from the very bottom of our heart, we express our sincere gratitude to Dr. Akta Parvez for conducting very highly effective sessions on three consecutive days. Thank you very much for sparing your valuable time from your busy schedule for this event. A big thank you to the participants of the LDP. And as I said earlier, the active participation of the delegates was very much reflected during the question answer session. So thank you very much for your active participation and interaction. And kindly accept my apologies if you have faced any inconvenience during the streaming of this LDP. You all are requested to submit the feedback form for the sessions. Uh, special thanks to the senior library professionals of uh, Sarvajanic Education Societies, like uh, Dr. N. Padma, Dr. Neela Rajaguru, Ms. Himangini Desai, and the other library professional colleagues like Dr. Niza, Dr. Lata, uh, then Saira, then Mr. Pawan, uh, for remaining present in all the three days for this LDP. And last but not least, uh, thanks to Ms. Himakshi Modi, Mr. Banti Patel, Mr. Tejas, Mr. Parvez Mansuri and the entire technical team of SES for coordinating the sessions effectively. So with this, uh, we come to the end of this three-day virtual national library and development program. So again, we'll meet sometimes in future with few more, one more LDPs. Till then, goodbye. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. And thank uh, the organizer and in particular you and of course the chairman of the society. And of course, participants. And I hope that they benefited from this uh, LDP. And uh, uh, if they have any, you know, uh, queries, questions, they can always get in touch. With you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, once again. Actually, Chairman Sir, just sent a message. Actually, he was uh, about to remain present for this uh, session, no but there were some immediate meetings, so he had to go for that. So. Thank you. So thank you, thank you everyone. Bye bye. Stay safe. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.